हेलो एंड वेलकम दिस इज भास्कर नापते फ्रॉम फार्मा ग्रोथ हब सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट हाउ टू डिफाइन स्टैंडर्ड एंड सैंपल कंसंट्रेशन फॉर रेसिड्यू और स्वैब एनालिसिस आई एम श्योर यू मस्ट बी अवेयर अबाउट व्हाट इज बीन बाय स्वैब एनालिसिस और द रेसिड्यू एनालिसिस now this is the procedure required to understand the left over quantity of your interstitial compounds onto the cleaned equipment surfaces and for that reason you must understand the macro value i am sure in case uh, if you do not know what is mean by macro and how to calculate that i have prepared video on to calculation of macro so please go and uh no watch that video so first and foremost to understand the limit for your residue you must know the maximum allowable carry over or the macro value now for this time i am just going to consider let us say my macro value per swab is let us say 2 microgram right and as i said it's per swab now this is the correct term so my macro value for each swab that i am going to take during the swabbing of the surface is how much it is 2 microgram so once i withdraw the swab i mean once i take the swab sample and if my analysis technique is hplc or gas tomography is it possible for me to just inject the sample inside the chromatography not and for that reason i have to prepare the sample solution and to prepare a sample solution i need to dilute the swab to a certain amount of volume with the suitable diluent so for example my diluent is in this case uh, let us say isopropyl alcohol and water 50 50 i have just taken the example and the volume is how much volume of diluent is 10 ml so at the end when i prepare the sample what will be the concentration of my sample solution the concentration of sample will be if i assume that now understand here one thing if i assume that if my sample contain the residue to its limit level now that is what is maximum allowed right in the uh, sample so what is the maximum allowed concentration look here it is 2 microgram per swab so i am actually ending diluting 2 microgram to 10 ml right if i assume that my sample my swab sample contain the permissible level the content which is allowed to be present on to the equipment surface and how much is the content by the way it is 2 microgram so i am diluting actually 2 microgram to 10 ml so if i further do a calculation i will find that my so, the concentration of my final solution is going to become 0.2 microgram per ml 0.2 microgram per ml now this is my concentration at the working level this is the concentration of my sample at the working level so how to define the standard solution concentration standard solution concentration it is always advisable to select the concentration of standard equal to its working level and as i said that my working level is 0.2 microgram per ml i would prefer the concentration of standard the concentration of standard as 0.2 microgram per ml right 
And then I conduct some experiment because I let us say do not have the test procedure in the hand. I do not know what parameters are right to achieve the good response for my standard. Now what has been my good response? The good response is what where I get the percent RST uh, uh, less than let us say 5% if my 5% is the requirement for percent RST of 5 replicate or 6 replicate standard injections. If I get the recovery uh, which is in between let us say 80 to 120 percent. If my detector's response is linear from LOQ to let us say 150 percentage of the standard concentration. Now these are my prerequisites. So by considering all of them I have to evaluate the chromatographic condition. Let us move ahead and understand how to do that. The real challenge into the residual method is not the detector's linearity. It is actually the response to a selected concentration. Because we are dealing with very low level amount of analyte. And this is going to result into a very small amount of response. So the first and foremost, I am going to check the repeatability of the six standard injections. I am going to check the signal to noise ratio for the standard solution because as I said the sensitivity or response is the real issue. So unless and until unless and until there is a good amount of signal to noise ratio how I am going to quantify the sample present into a solution and for that reason if your sample or standard concentration should result more than 10 signal to noise ratio or can I say in another term LOQ or rather than saying LOQ I will say that the standard concentration must be must be greater than LOQ or in another word, can I say that LOQ of my method or LOQ concentration, LOQ concentration must be less than standard concentration. Now this statement is very important. LOQ concentration must be less than my standard concentration. So I must be able to develop a method which has a LOQ lower than my standard concentration. So in this case as my standard concentration is 0.2 microgram per ml. If my LOQ is less than 0.2 microgram per ml. For example 0.1 microgram per ml. Then my method will be acceptable then my method will be acceptable but if I run this uh, you know uh, development experiment and if I found that my LOQ of this method is greater than 0.2 microgram per ml I have a experiment conducting and found to be greater than 0.2 microgram per ml the LOQ of method is found to be greater than 0.2 microgram per ml which is not accepted as we discussed. And then what I am going to do, I am going to change the chromatographic parameters. I may change column dimensions, I may change injection volume. And I am going to understand whether these changes are helping me to achieving an limit of quantitation below my standard concentration which is 0.2 microgram per ml in the given case. Now there could be two possibilities. I may able to achieve LOQ less than 0.2 microgram per ml and hence I can select those conditions and I will move ahead. But in case if I am not able to achieve <coughs> the LOQ of 0.2 microgram per ml or less than that 
<clears throat> then how to deal with the situation in that situation i need to increase the concentration of solution itself so rather so how to increase the concentration of test solution so how the solution concentration gets defined the solution concentration get defined by the volume of diluent i have added 10 ml of the diluent so this 2 microgram got diluted to 10 ml and resulted into 0.2 microgram per ml concentration so if i have to increase the concentration of the test solution i need to add less amount of diluent volume so in the second case what i am going to do is i will rather than adding 10 ml of the diluent i am going to add let us say 5 ml of the diluent okay and once i add 5 ml of the diluent let us now recalculate the concentration of sample so the 2 microgram is not going to change because it is the fundamental macro limit but this 10 ml now must be changed by 5 ml <clears throat> so if 2 microgram gets diluted to 5 ml it is going to become 0.4 microgram per ml now now can you see the increase into the concentration right so my new requirement is now what my LOQ must be less than 0.4 microgram per ml the new requirement is what my LOQ must be less than 0.4 microgram per ml so if i get an LOQ of let us say 0.3 microgram per ml it is also accepted it is also acceptable and hence now I have got the requirement of LOQ and now I can define the standard and sample preparation. So let us say how to define the standard preparation. Standard preparation. So what is my requirement of the standard concentration? It is 0.4 microgram per ml. So I will say weigh and dilute. 40 mg standard hmm, to 100 ml now what is the concentration of this stock 40 mg diluted to 100 ml is going to give me a 400 ppm right but my requirement is what 0.4 ppm so further dilute 1 ml of the resultant solution 200 ml so this case i got a uh, 4 ppm solution hmm? here i got uh, let us say 400 ppm solution and here i got a 4 ppm or if i have to remove this ppm term which is not actually correct uh, I will say 400 microgram per ml and uh, in this case I will say 4 microgram per ml okay so we got the terms corrected but what is the requirement it is not the 4 microgram per ml but it is 0.4 microgram per ml so if I further dilute 10 ml to 100 ml the solution will be of 0.4 microgram per ml so i will say further dilute 10 ml of the resultant solution this is 4 microgram per ml solution don't use the first stock solution to how much ml 100 ml now what is the concentration of the final solution it is nothing but 0.4 microgram per ml you got the standard preparation right 
Now, how you are going to define the sample preparation? So, uh, take the swab hmm, of the defined area, maybe let us say 4 inch by 4 inch, which is generally a practice, right? with wet swab bud so that you will be able to get the content present onto the surface then dilute it or if it's not dilute you can say that add 5 ml of the diluent and further sh shake and sonicate now this is your process according to the requirement but the more the important point is here uh, 5 ml of the diluent so you are actually going to make a solution which is 0.4 microgram per ml assuming your swab contain the 2 microgram of the analyte I hope this uh, small presentation must have given you an overview on preparation of uh, standard and sample during the residue or swab analysis. In case if you are also looking for such kind of very informative and useful videos, join the Pharma Growth Hub. So there is a link given in the description. Click onto the link and join the Pharma Growth Hub so that you will receive such kind of videos on the whatsapp itself thank you so much